our series of marine electrical systems, and in this video we're going to be talking with Jean-Marc Zaini, who is an electrical engineer and has worked with Pierre on a number of projects. But first I'd like to tell you about some of the projects that Jean-Marc and Pierre have worked on together. Those include an outboard 180 horsepower fully electric motor. It won the Innovation Prize at the Dusseldorf Boat Show a number of years ago. And they also did a number of twin serial hybrid electric boats. One of my favorite projects that Pierre and Jean-Marc worked on was the one with Ian Bruce. So Ian Bruce is well known as one of the inventors of the laser sailboat and he built um, a classic style runabout and wanted electric propulsion and that was a beautiful boat. Tragically the boat was in a car accident so it was being trailered and uh, a car smashed into it and there's nothing left of it. But we do have videos of the boat and uh, the full length of the video are down below. Jean-Marc is kind of a humble person and doesn't really tell his background when he introduces himself. Uh, he's an electrical engineer with a master's in electrical engineering. Uh, he worked in high voltage systems in uh, industrial settings for a number of years before jumping full time into the marine sector. He's been working on electric boats and hybrid electric boats for over 10 years now. He's been involved with a number of different projects with lots of different boat manufacturers and he has tons of experience. And aside from that, super nice guy. No problem. So hello Jean-Marc, nice to see you by Zoom. Nice so to see you. Why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, I'm Jean-Marc Zani. Uh, I work with Pierre and, uh, for uh, about five years with Regen Nordic. I was the uh, engineering manager uh, in charge of designing all the electric uh, system for Pierre. And tell us about your, your current company. Uh, you know, basically, I'm followed the, uh, the path. I'm now designing, uh, still designing electric boat. Uh, pr principally, I design electric boats for Silent Yacht currently, is my, uh, is my main customer. I am the uh, technical director for Silent Yacht. So this is the uh, Silent Yacht 55. The, so we have a total of uh, about 10 kilowatts of solar panel on the roof. We have three battery packs. Each of those battery packs is uh, 70 kilowatt hours. So it's a Tesla for each pack. So we have 210 kilowatt hours of uh, energy. When you at anchor, we can live off those batteries for a very long period of time. We visited you in Barcelona and saw that silent yacht with the installation you made. It was pretty impressive. And I'll put mm -hmm. a link below because um, there's a nice video on that. But uh, just tell us a, a little bit about that boat and the batteries that they have in it because the episode here is all about batteries. Yes, people at silent yacht had heard of what we had done and then we um, uh, they approached me to design something for them uh, similar to that. Um, we, it's basically a twin electric system and do the full integration uh, of all the high voltage system for the propulsion and also all the integration of the solar system into the, the boat so we can manage the whole energy uh, of the boat. So the, were they originally working with the MG batteries? Was that your first experience with MG batteries? Yes. And uh, when Silent asked me to work with MG to, uh, on the uh, 400 volt system, I agreed uh, to do so. After visiting you, we decided to put those batteries in Biotrack and we're so happy with them. And um, so 
we were really excited to hear that they asked you to be the North American distributors. They wanted to expand in the North American market. And our main goal at this point is to develop a network of dealers. You help design what they need and then they can get someone locally to follow the design and do the installation. Is exactly. That... Yeah. The, the beauty of the, the, the MG system for, for, for the, in the marine industry is that they are fully integrated into the Victron system. If you have what we call uh, a GX product, either a CCGX or uh, a servo, uh, which are display, the battery will show up automatically. You have nothing to do. It's just, uh, it's just there. In, in our case, we have Masterbolt. Is that why we have the separate PLC or is that just because you, you, you know, you, Care loves to do it. And when you were bored, you love to program it's, it's it. It's a little bit of both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But yes, the, the primary reason is they're not directly inter integrated into a master vault system. Therefore, they need to have a, a, a bridge to communicate. We're doing better. Uh, MG is trying to design a few systems, so at least data can be available on the master vault network. Uh, most specifically because they have an MEA 2000 uh, compatible software, so some of the data can be shown. You know, in the marine industry, there's so much interest in lithium batteries, but, but the problem is, is that you, you just can't drop them in, as you said. And so, you know, that's kind of a barrier for people who are not engineers or don't have that comfort level to, to be DIY. Yeah, eventually it, it will come to that. Uh, Master Vault tend to, they have their own uh, lithium battery. They don't want to let other batteries to come in. And so they don't open the system. But the bigger problem is when you have lithium batteries to make sure you charge to the proper voltage. You need to make sure that you don't try to charge when the batteries are too cold or if they are too hot. So there are other parameters that need to be monitored when you charge. Within the Victron system, this is all integrated. Within the Master Vault, it's, it's, it's not that easy. Victron, uh, uh, MG Energy, and Wake Speed uh, have developed a, a regulator, for example, for, for, for the engine, so that you can directly charge and control the charge of the, the batteries. The regulator totally talks to the, the battery directly and knows exactly how much a battery can accept and not accept. And, and, and work with it. It's a lot more difficult with the, the uh, Master Vault system. As you know, Jean-Marc, MG came over down, came down to uh, Outremer uh, right after the delivery of the boat. And they had a good chat mm -hmm. with the engineers. I was a little bit involved in it, but they never uh, called me up for the meeting. Uh, basically, they found MG to be very, very open and very willing to uh, write the software required to speak with Mastervolt, but uh, we're buying all of their batteries from Mastervolt, which I find very sad because, mm -hmm. you know, as an owner, you've spent so much money trying to save a few pounds on the mast, uh, save a few pounds on the roof, save a few pounds here and there, and just by putting carbon instead of fiberglass. So you end up spending a lot of money. If you look at it, you know, the, the amount of moderate money you're spending to save a few pounds is actually very, very high. And, uh, and now we know the MG batteries, especially the one we're using, are half, basically half the weight of the master volt and half the volume of master volt. So it's just yeah. extremely frustrating to see that, uh, you know, just for commercial reasons, uh, they're not willing to mm -hmm. do the legwork and just... Uh, well, change is slow, but, um, you know, yeah. we, we, I, I like that we're the leading edge. And, you know, thanks to your help, Sean Mark, because uh, really uh, you're the ones who led us to those batteries. And we... Um, well, Happy to. I think they're fabulous because I don't have anything to do with it and only <laughs> complain if uh, something goes wrong and I haven't had to do any complaining at all. <laughs> <laughs> and Pierre likes challenges well, when things go wrong, but we have not had anything go wrong with those batteries. We've got a huge power requirements on our boat because with air conditioners and things and when we had some guests on board. Um, we don't like using air conditioners at anchor, and we realized that two cabins on the guest side were running air conditioners at night. Did the batteries complain? No. Did we complain? Yes. <laughs> Care went into the PLC and changed some of the programming. <laughs> uh, we did a, a project uh, with a Nordavon 65. Okay, uh, we replaced uh, eight uh, AGM uh, batteries with at least six. Uh, LFP. In, in their case, 
they had AGM, so they wanted to go LFP, which is heavier than what, what you have. Um, yeah. uh, but that was so much lighter than the um, uh, the uh, the AGM, and the way the boat was cons uh, was built, all the AGM on one was on, well on one side. So in order to level the boat, they also had uh, lead bar on the other side, so the boat would be level. So. <laughs> the customer <laughs> remove the AGM, remove the lead bars. Uh, the boat sits two uh, two inches higher on, on the water line, um, and, and now you can have uh, air conditioning all night long. And, Find and that bars. Talking... Why didn't you put a wine cellar? <laughs> 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 and so, do you think that this technology is going to become more accessible for smaller boats, like you know? Um, on some of my videos, I've talked about my 26-foot extra dry Mirage 26. It is happening currently everywhere. As we've been saying for a while with Pierre, is the, the actual cost of ownership of uh, lithium battery is less than the cost of ownership of lead-acid batteries. Yes, it's a high upfront cost to buy them. They will last a lot longer. When you want to do it, you have to think about it. But when it's done, you have nothing to do. And Jean-Marc, people are always worried about safety. So, you know, there have been stories about fires of Teslas that get the news, even though gas engines are so much more um, dangerous when we're talking about motor vehicles. But, you know, a fire on the water is a very serious matter. And so what can you say when people, to people who have concerns about safety of, of these batteries? Most of the problem, if you have one, is it would be the route will be a, an insulation problem. So it should not be done haphazardly uh, with bad connections uh, and not being connection, not being tight. Uh, that's the number one problem. The battery are not intrinsically dangerous. Uh, they are dangerous if you push them beyond what they can do. And that's the, the reason to have an extremely good BMS system. If you have a, a shoddy BMS that does not read the temperature properly, that does not uh, half of the time does not read the volt cell voltage properly or does not balance the batteries properly, uh, you're putting yourself at risk. And that's the, the main uh, reason for some of the failure we, we see. And that's why I decided to work with the MG people and they are extremely reliable. Uh, we even have batteries, um, the HE or the LFPs are not at this point, but we, we have the RS series, which are batteries that are approved by DNV for commercial application up to a thousand volt. Just generally about lithium batteries, do you work with other manufacturers or just solely MG right now? Currently, personally, I work solely with uh, MG batteries. Uh, we have worked with different batteries. P and I have worked with different batteries before. We've tried to build our own batteries with uh, mixed results, <laughs> I shall say. <laughs> um, but uh, currently, that's. Yeah, but there are the, uh, other battery manufacturers. I mean, we, the big names like Victron and Mastervolt, and but you have other manufacturers. The one thing, though, I would say is uh, there is a big debate and, and, and argument at this point, in a, even into ABYC, American Boat and uh, Yacht Council, regarding the the way to protect. You asking about safety protection on the batteries. Um, should we have an internal BMS or an external BMS? The, the MG system has an external BMS. The, uh, they have each battery has its own monitoring system, but the relay and all the, the, the safety is external and, and, and controlled uh, by or respond to the state of the batteries, which allows you to know exactly what's happening in the system. You can find a lot of batteries on the market, um, Paderborn, for example. They, they have an internal BMS but you don't know anything. So you don't know if the battery is doing well and bad. Uh, you, don't, you only know the voltage on the external and mostly with the LFP, voltage is absolutely meaningless. Uh, you can have, if you have a very good uh, battery monitoring system, you have a better ID, uh, but you don't know if a cell is starting to degrade and anything like that. Whereas with the MG system, you can, you can pinpoint those early. So that is the advantage of the, um, and the external BMS. Now, should that be a requirement was a, the, the big discussion. Uh, personally, it's a requirement for me, but exactly. I would not necessarily say that it has to be a, a market requirement. 
We don't know what's happening with the UAGM batteries. And that's why half of the AGN dies uh, within two years is because the batteries uh, are not balanced properly or uh, don't have enough water. And you kill them by overcharging one cell and undercharging the, the other one. So if we don't require it for the, 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 the uh, lead acid battery, why would we require it for lithium? If you don't do it properly with the lithium batteries, then, then you have a bigger risk of fire. Because you store bigger. more energy. Yeah. Bigger. Yeah, no, it's clear that whatever the, uh, you know, the electrical uh, communication is, the battery has to have authority to open the contactor, the, notwithstanding what the boat is asking yeah. for. Both the low voltage side, the high voltage side, temperature or load, you know, all of these parameters as it's done with the MG uh, should have the authority, the internal system should have the authority to open the contactor and say, I don't want to play with this and just get out of it. Mm -hmm. So if this was implemented in all the battery yeah. pack, there would be very little issues. The, the, the battery with internal BMS will do that. Uh, we have had the experience with, with a different manufacturer uh, where the battery would kick out and we never know why. We have no idea why. Something is, the battery is not happy with something um, and, and you don't know how to fix it or, or what to do about it. That's the problem with the uh, internal BMS system. The other limitation I found personally of um, the um, many of the batteries with internal BMS, they use electronic switch um, MOSFET uh, as we call them in electronic, uh, which are good. They're very fast, uh, but they all have current limitations. And so they are, those batteries usually are not very good to deal with uh, application with high peak load uh, winches. Uh, yeah. uh, windless uh, because you need, suddenly you have a very big spike of current and the whole battery quits because the, uh, the it is above the capacity of the uh, the MOSFET and they're trying yeah. to protect themselves. They're doing the good job. Be careful when you choose your lithium battery and be aware of that uh, of that limitation. But the answer to that, as you and I know, is just to have state-of-the-art motors for the winches. <laughs> In which case you have a controller and then you don't care about it because they'll monitor the amps. So uh, we're just dealing with old technology, yeah. trying to, every time you try to marry old technology with new technology, you end up with issues like this. It's absolutely clear. So what's your biggest competition right now as, you know, as the new U.S. distributor for MG? The problem at this point is name, name recognition. We, we, we're not very well known. I just want to just say to our <laughs> viewers right now, we don't have any uh, commercial relationship. We're just good friends. And so I just want to yeah. make the YouTube viewers aware of that. It's important to get the word out. And, and it is getting out. We do not want to go through the big distribution market because it is a new technology. It needs to be implemented properly. And so we, we want to make sure we deal with people who knows what they're doing or we're trying to develop our business through the existing Victron network uh, because we know they have dealers that have been trained properly. So tell us about the different kinds of boats that you know of that now have these batteries. And of course, Biotrack has them. <laughs> so. Yeah, Biotrack, San Yacht. Uh, there is uh, San Lorenzo, uh, Super Yacht, San Lorenzo. We have, uh, now we have three Nord Havens. They have a lot of batteries in all kind of different projects in uh, in the Netherlands for electric ba uh, boats, including Fisher Panda, our friends, uh, uh, Hans, uh, oh, yeah. Joachim, they have a, uh, they have a boat, yeah. and now they have uh, the uh, MG batteries. Many boats, uh, all kind. The, the only thing the batteries cannot do at this point, they are not watertight. So you cannot be in a too small of a boat because you're of the risk of water penetration. So you need to have them pro uh, well protected from the seawater. Uh, or make a watertight casing. Or make did, a watertight casing. Did you so see the watertight casing that Utremer made for the original lith lithium batteries we were going to put in before we bought the MGs? Mm. It, was, it was actually down in the bilge, and it's a super watertight yeah. um, compartment, and now Pierre uses it to store all his electrical tools because it's <laughs> watertight. And normally you wouldn't put electrical tools in the bilge. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to the, um, to, to, the, to the original idea of the Tesla and uh, some of your discussion you and I uh, had that Tesla batteries, you can buy very cheap Tesla batteries um, and mostly the Model S uh, type. The yeah. problem is the voltage of those batteries is a bit too low 
And yeah. well, that was my so, so, no, yeah. so explain that in a little more detail because this is super interesting. Why too low a voltage is a problem? The rest of the system is not designed for it. The rest of the system is, when we say the system has a nominal voltage of, uh, of 24 volt, at full voltage, um, the batteries are almost at 27 volt, I mean 26, 8, depending on, on, on it. Um, and then the minimum voltage is 21 volt. Well, the Tesla pack, the way it is designed, the maximum voltage is 24 volt, and the minimum is 18. So as soon as you're below 21 volt, half of your equipment st stop working because it's below the, the normal operating range. The battery is not empty, so now you can have more batteries if you want, but you need to be very aware of, of that. You know, I, I, as you remember, Jean-Marc, I did a lot of testing with the Tesla modules. And if we were to look at the uh, Tesla opportunity again, I would tend to go with a full pack, a full 360 volt pack, which is standard for the industry, instead of going with those little modules, which were just you know, off standard mm -hmm. with six in series instead of seven in series, which was creating all of these vol low voltage issues. But uh, absolutely, we, I was able to find a lot of electronics that would handle the lower voltage down to 20 volts. Uh, not all of uh, electronics will work at that low voltage, but you know some do. So you're able to, you know, yeah. by be, being careful. The problem was with everything else in the boat, that like uh, you know, uh, winch uh, or the uh, windlass or all of these motors. Now you're starting to run into very low voltage, and as you said, uh, not mm -hmm. just the fact of the cable, but the fact that they do heat up a lot more. And if you're running into high yes. amps and and you know and uh, and and uh, bad for the uh, marine industry again all of the winch uh, and uh, wind lasts are just built using starter motors and they're just there yeah. you know for a temporary load of maybe 30 seconds a minute two minutes at the most and then they temp out and uh, mm. by by being low voltage it was in compounding the issues so that's why when i spoke to you when you said that you had these batteries from you know mg which you know, were uh, really well suited, having seven in series instead of six, that really solved all the issues. Hey, Melissa. Melissa. In making these videos, I'm learning more about our boat systems than I ever have before. Um, I may get a few things wrong. <laughs> uh, our viewers usually will point it out if I have something wrong. Uh, no, I, so I, I enjoy it because it makes me more interested in learning about boat systems. And, you know, normally, you know, I've always been busy with work. I don't have time. Kara's an expert. You know, I've, I've got to do my work or whatever, which is, as you know, in a completely different field. So this has been kind of uh, fun for me. And um, not that I'm going to do hands-on, but at least I can understand the theory behind it. I don't like getting my hands dirty. <laughs>